We are joined by Dr. Steve Pachenik for the next 50 minutes, stevepachenik.com. He's a medical doctor and a board-examining psychiatrist, and, of course, a, uh, held a, the rank basically a colonel when he was in the Navy, did a lot of secret operations he can't get into, helped found Delta Force with General Boykin, uh, and, of course, ran PSYOPs for the State Department and advised the U.S. Army. And, of course, he is a composite character of the Jack Ryan character. Nobody probably even knows who that is nowadays. Uh, from the Patriot Games and wrote a bunch of books with Tom Clancy. He has a new book that he advised on that just came out as well. And uh, he's also has a medical company that he never talks about. I'm going to talk about that at the bottom of the hour and take your phone calls. I know we have callers left over from before. But Chenick can talk about anything. Just address your comment or question at him for those first bank of callers. And we'll do another bank of callers specifically for Pachenik, 800-259-9231. Trained in psychiatry at Harvard University and international relations at MIT. His novels are based on over 20 years' experience resolving international crises. He's a top hostage negotiator for the Department of State and for four administrations. And he's, of course, been a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And he came on my show back in 2002 and said that 9-11 was an inside job and that bin Laden was dead and their government was financing radical Muslims and letting us attack us and ordering stand-downs. Uh, the CFR called up threatening him at the time. And I remember he called me and goes, yes, they're visiting me. Yes, they're very upset. That transcript, oh boy, uh, I guess leave it up, but what do you think? And well, the rest is history. And then basically stuff he's covered on the air has been attacked by Stratford, which uh, again is an admitted CIA um, echo chamber. Because the CIA is not supposed to be involved in domestic propaganda. They made it legal this year, but before that, they used Stratford for that, which overall, Stratford promotes you know guns and some free freedom issues, so at least they're not communist in their ideology. But as a CIA tentacle, I'm not even saying they're the worst thing out there, uh, but you know they do criticize me for no reason because uh, I don't believe they're baloney on bin Laden. But Dr. Pachinik joins us. He was on Sunday for just two segments and was just dropping bombshell after bombshell. I want you to talk to us like we're five years old, Dr. Pachenik, because whenever you're talking, I can tell you're talking to the establishment. And that's important to have that conduit. But there are different groups in the establishment, obviously. So talk about the different power structures that are there, the good, the bad, the ugly, the different mafias that are there, the different combines that are there in your well-researched view. And then describe to us how you see the battlefront, the battle space. Will they pull a false flag to make Obama look like an angel and pull his bacon? Because he's falling apart so fast. Uh, what's going on with Russia? I know you're an expert on that and don't like the Ruskies. Uh, and the whole Ukraine situation and this gas pipeline. All of it with Dr. Steve Pachenik right now. Uh, and then we'll go to Bill in Thailand and everybody else that's holding. Uh, Renee in Canada, Douglas in Idaho, Daniel in Colorado, Wayne in Texas. All right, Doc, there's my long... Uh, hypomanic introduction to you. You've got the floor now. Tell us, please answer the question. What are the real power structures? Who are the power players in your view? And who are the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, the real power structure always goes behind what Stalin once said. The power of the gun is what determines the viability of the power structure. That's pretty crude, but it is very real, even in a republic. And remember, we are in a republic. I want to congratulate everybody with the veteran, but basically the power structure in America is what Eisenhower said, the military-industrial complex, as evidenced by the following. First, it's the military with its numerous generals, admirals, and all kinds of senior officials, whom we do not need now. We are downsizing our military. We should be downsizing, but we're not. In fact, we have more generals and admirals than we had in World War II, where George Marshall, the most brilliant of all strategists, created two wars in two different arenas, the Pacific and, and Europe, where we won two wars. Since that time, as a comment about our military, we have lost every major war. As, as General Boykin has said, who was the head of special forces and one with whom I've worked with, we have not won a battle since 1944 in the Battle of the Bulge. That's a very serious indictment of our military, but at the same time, we have a new breed of military leaders, the likes of which we have not seen before. Many of them, like Keith Alexander, General Petraeus, uh, many others have PhDs as well as multiple degrees in strategic analysis and in cyber war. We're coming into a new era where the gun, the missile, and even the ICBM and the B-52 and the old triad of power that we used to run from the White House under the Nixon, Ford, Reagan administration the triad of the bombers, the ICBMs, the 
nuclear uh, submarines. The only one left is the nuclear submarine, and that's been supplanted by really cyber war. And the man who brought it to the forefront in the power structure was uh, really quite formidable, Dr. Keith Alexander, or General Keith Alexander, who's been correctly reprimanded for overreaching his own mandate, but he's done that in the attempt to really understand how far the national security agency can reach. Now, having said that, a major power would probably be within the national security agency, 16 or 15 other intelligence groups, including the civilian CIA. Now, I have been a fan of the old CIA, where you had people who came out of the OSS, men like Paul Redman, uh, Jim Lilly, Don Gregg, and others who really came in because they wanted to be dedicated to America. But unfortunately, over the past 20 to 30 years, the CIA, a civilian organization, became a paramilitary organization, co-opted part of the military units through an office called the Special Operations Low Intensity Conflict Office, or SOLIC, and took in special forces where they asked them to take off the, uh, their, uh, their ranks and basically put them in paramilitary organizations. General Dennis Blair and others like myself and other generals feel that this is no longer appropriate. We need our special forces under total command of the military. And isn't that a coup of the republic system that George Washington set up uh, in 1776 when he founded the army, which then they immediately then go to the mercenaries and make them the new rock stars, uh, up front paying them a bunch, now they don't as much, to suck everyone out uh, of the old republic system into their new private uh, army, which can then be spun off uh, to foreign corporations, and you basically have a soft coup. Well, that's correct. What's happened in effect over the period since 9-11, the most famous stand down and the one that should receive kudos, and I know Alex is very, uh, uh, very, very uh, private about it. He really does deserve the kudos for broadcasting. What was the significant message that this was a stand down and a false flag? Since that time, we haven't had that. We've had deception, denial, and distortion. But the most important false flag we've had in the 21st century was the 9-11 one in America's prime time. Now, what happened as a result of that is Cheney, who had never served in the military and refused to serve 11 times when he was drafted, yet I and others who were drafted the first time went in. This coward, or chicken hawk, Cheney, sent our boys into harm's way in Iraq and Afghanistan, knowing fully well that they were going into getting killed for no reason whatsoever. So we've been in wars that we don't really need. Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. We've, had a, no such we've thing had a complex... War on terror. I'm sorry? So, so we've had a military industrial complex that purely was about profit, even if it undermined the overall interest of the United States. That sounds like killing the golden goose. Even if I was a sociopathic globalist making billions, I would not want to undermine my main command base. Well, you're correct, Alex. The key issue now for America and why I'm very positive about America and even more positive about our military, but American citizens have to put a break on what's called the military-industrial complex. General Eisenhower was clearly a formidable leader, but he was also a formidable American who was a very uh, a down-to-earth individual who said, look, if we don't watch our military-industrial complex, we will erode the basis of the republic. What is happening now and why we have to be careful is that the republic has turned into an empire. The empire is out of control. With 783 bases in 223 countries, we are fighting no one. And actually, we have a Navy that should be denying access to the Chinese. That's probably the legitimate national security concern we have in South China, which is being negotiated now. Other than that, we have no real interest in other countries. ISIS is not a major concern for us. Israel is not a major concern for us. The Middle East is not a major concern. We are a formidable net exporter of oil and gas. As a result of that, we have, because of our entrepreneurial entrepreneurial skills and ingenuity, we have been a net exporter of oil and now gas. We do not need Saudi Arabia. We do not need any uh, Middle Eastern country to supply oil or gas. And in turn, they cannot manipulate the price that we decide to lower. And we keep lowering the price of gas and oil down from 100 Brent oil to 80 Brent oil, and probably will bring it down to what the Canadians have, which is $50 a barrel of Brent oil. My suspicion is we will have the Keystone Pipeline going all the way from Alberta down to Texas. And the reason for that is because Canada needs to export its shale gas oil 
through that pipeline, and we have been a very good partner. To and why would George Soros be trying to block that key pipeline? Is he, uh, how, how, how in bed is he with the Chinese? Uh, Obama is not very well in bed with the Chinese. I really have to give him credit. The Chinese are basically deciding two things. One, they're putting into position and they're saying to all of their neighbors, primarily Vietnam, which, by the way, after 30 years, has been our strongest ally in Southeast Asia. We are going to be parking our, our military in Vietnam. We officially don't have bases there because we don't want to... End, uh, uh, yeah, for those that don't know, uh, China's been attacking Vietnam, and people think it's weird that we're teamed up with Vietnam now. They've been fighting the Chinese for 500 years, and, and that's why Correct. they didn't want us there. It was always stupid to go there. Is anybody that tries to go there, they fight them. And it's just how bizarre now that you're about to, uh, you know, have these... And why is China making statements like, we may take Philippine Islands, we may take Japanese Islands? Why are they escalating their rhetoric, and what is this gas deal mean with Putin, and then let's segue into Russia. Okay, the, the issue why China is talking as loudly as they are, they have it for internal consumption, not for external. China right now is not capable of manning a, uh, an effective fleet uh, against our own fleet. We have, in effect, our sink pack of commander-in-chief of the Pacific has denied access to the most important straits of water straits, which is the Strait of Malacca, where trade goes through, and 80% of the trade is are protecting Chinese boats. So if you really want to look at the paradox of the situation, our Navy protects Chinese boats to do free trade into Southeast Asia. The second part is Vietnam is the only country that has defeated five countries, including France, Japan, uh, China twice, and the United States. And they have no animosity to us because they realize that we came in there not as exploiters, or as colonialist, but basically as a, an opportunity, and we left, as opposed to the French, whom they really hate. Now, what happened to China is Putin, because we are decreasing the price of oil, and then effectively we are in an economic war, let this be understood. This is not by chance, nor was Gorbachev uh, correct about saying this is a new Cold War. This is not a new Cold War. Gorbachev knows that he was taken down because we were effective in both the Bush administration and the Reagan administration, and I must give credit to Bush Sr., who was exemplary in really running the operations against the Soviet Union. Let me repeat it again. Reagan gets proper credit, but the person who does not get proper credit and should be lauded for what was done in the Soviet Union and against the Soviet is uh, George H.W. Bush, 41, and James Baker, Secretary of State. These are two exceedingly modest men from Texas who have never asserted the rightful place in the history of the takedown of the Soviet Union. They were the implementers. They were the ones who provided the overall oversight over my strategy and tactics that were developed at the RAND Corporation, then incorporated by the CIA and the military intelligence. And we effectively took down the Soviet Union against their economic variables, their military variables, and their religious. Never underestimate that we are a Christian society, a Judeo-Christian society, where Pope John was very effective at bringing together one million Polish Catholics on the border of Russia to basically say religion is not dead, and we will stimulate that religion of Greek Orthodox or Russian Orthodox in the Soviet Union, and that was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. So contrary to what Gorbachev would like to believe, or anybody else would like to believe, this was really a, a, a group effort on behalf of the CIA, the military intelligence, Bush Sr., Reagan and Baker, who really carried through an immense amount of, of, of heavy-duty work with uh, multiple coordinates involved in the economic, the military, the, the, uh, even music we used to, to show that we could break up the apparatchiks, which we used to rock and roll, believe it or not, and religion. So this is not, we're not entering a new Cold War. What's happening is because we are a formidable country, and I think everybody should recognize it and enjoy it to this moment, we have created envy. Envy in this world means that the Russians historically have never been able to equal what we have done, despite the fact that we have taken down twice their repressive regime. And probably Putin will leave within time, because he can no longer manage an economic system that's based on the market economy. Sure. Putin doc, 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 let's shift gears for a moment. After you finish on Russia, get into, though, the awakening, the moving back to the states, uh, the liberty movement, what you think is positive, because I see a lot of positive stuff, 
but the corporate globalist interests that are using the United States like it's evil Frankenstein, they're not giving up. They're moving forward. I mean, I see them pulling false flags. I see them doing economic scams. Uh, but they're also afraid to do big false flags now because they know we're aware of the tricks. So I want to talk about that political landscape as well. Sure. The American political landscape, thanks to you and others, quite frankly, these are what we will call the conspiracy or the alternative media, has really become the mainstay. We took that name, and I thank Alex and others who were involved, and became the mainstay because what in fact happened is we devolved the power all the way from the White House down to the regional governors and then to the commission. And as a result of the Tea Party movement, which did have an impetus effect and eventually had lost its usage, it basically stimulated a lot of the grassroots uh, initiatives and the, and the basic underlying uh, Americanism within our people. That is, we understood that we were being hoodwinked. We understood what we were being lied to. We understood that, that Obama didn't belong there. We understood that Bush lied to us. We understood that Clinton was immoral. So what happens in return, our reactions come out thanks to people like you who can articulate those feelings and basically state the positions we said no more. We don't want this. We don't want the Bushes. We don't want the Clinton. And as Barbara Bush said, no more Bushes in the White House. She's correct. And I would add, no more Clintons in the White House. So we are beginning to evolve into a new political entity, which has greater control at the grassroots level, where the corporations are not that effective. That's why they have gone overseas. But what happened when they went overseas is they forgot that the American worker is the most efficient, fast, entrepreneurial worker in the world. When he went to China, the corporation, they came back with very poor products. When they went to India, they came back with medicines that were highly uh, 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 diluted by other products. So the American corporation suddenly said, wait a minute, Europe is going into devaluation and deflation. China's heading into deflation and a problem with their environment. We're coming back to the United States. So what's happened is the corporations are economic cowards. What do I mean? Companies like Pfizer take what's called an inversion technique. They basically buy out a company like AstraZeneca, which is not a very effective pharmaceutical company, because of the tax advantages. And without leaving their own base, they go from a 35% tax rate down to a 15% tax rate, even though they've done nothing more than shift paperwork in New York. That has to change. The American public is basically subsidizing big corporation and big pharma which doesn't deserve it. Despite what they say to you and they say to me as a physician, they have not developed all these medications on the basis of FDA research and on the basis of the NIH. They developed it on the basis of having side effects and their own greed. So what I'm saying, the American public is a very effective instrument for brooking these big industries, for being able to stop them, for saying, okay, that's enough. We may not always agree with Obama, yet nevertheless, the economic warfare is effective against the Soviet Union and, I mean, against Russia. And Putin is, is crying out. He needs help. The Chinese need help now because we're going to fast track that trade. And that means a lot more for the political power base in the United States. We are now the only people that have had increase in our growth development. We've had a decrease in unemployment. And really, in relation to Europe and China and the world, we're doing much better. Even though there's the ISIS and Ebola, we're able to trans that we're able to transport beyond that sure. and get back into our work. What and about that's where the beauty? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Alex. Well, no, we're just going to break here. Okay. We're going to break when we come back. I want you to finish up, and we're going to some phone calls. We're also going to talk about your medical company, which we've never talked about. But before we go there, I want to specifically yeah. though get into what I call this fascist leftist ideology i don't even call it socialist where they get off on trying to destroy the family messing with men messing with women the attempt to screw up families and to screw up the society this is what you do to a foreign enemy and i would call that an immoral tactic why are they using those type of psyops to degenerate society here why is the political class doing that we'll talk to we're on the I want to talk to Dr. Pachinik about the question I was throwing at him uh, back as we went to break. And then I forgot. What was the question? It was an important question, and I wanted him to think about it. And I want to see if he remembers what the question was. It'll pop my head in a second.
This is teleprompter free, folks. So, I mean, you're really getting what I think here. So, sometimes I forget what I was talking about earlier. Uh, but we'll see if Dr. Pachanik remembers uh, the question I was asking him. And I'm also a little bit selfish, too. Uh, I know he's got two products that are world-renowned and are best sellers around the planet. Uh, he's into nutraceuticals as well as a medical doctor and psychiatrist. Uh, and so I want to pick his brain uh, about that as well. Because he just, you know, didn't just produce movies and write a bunch of books with Tom Clancy and, you know, run the State Department PSYOPs and do the Camp David Accords and all the amazing things he's done. Much of it classified so we can't talk about it. Uh, he also has a very successful nutraceutical company. Uh, and that's what we have at InfoWarsLife.com is the most cutting edge, documented products. And Pachinik said something so interesting during the break. He said, he said, well, Alex, I said, well, why are you so successful? He goes, really, no marketing? nothing he goes it's word of mouth we started out selling almost none of it and it just slowly grew over the years he was telling me what they sell a day it's just it's incredible uh and that's word of mouth see we're the same thing here a lot of nutraceutical companies just put out the basic thing they can or they put out crud or they put out synthetic stuff because they want to use marketing to do it no we don't use marketing we use hey you know this is really high quality just try it and then people get results at InfoWarsLife.com with the um, great products that are there, whether it's the Oxy Powder or Survival Shield or DNA Force uh, or whether it's the Lung Cleanse or whether it's the Fluoride Shield, Chelating Detoxifier or Colloidal Silver, the 300 parts per million, Nano Silver. Uh, just all of it is stuff that's been known uh, to have really good effects across the board and that is uh, that we can also then get the very best of and bring you at competitive prices at InfoWarsLife.com. You can also call toll-free 888-253-3139. But Dr. Pachinik, uh, tell me about your line of nutraceutical uh, supplements uh, because, I mean, I know that it's a very, very popular. People have gotten great results with it, and I'm interested. Uh, maybe you can work with us and help us formulate something, uh, Dr. Pachinik. Well, it's a pleasure. Let me first state that, Alex, uh, the question you asked me was about the nature of the left wing distorting the values of the American Oh, family. yeah. I mean, I mean, why do they come out and brag, yes, Obamacare well, is meant I mean, to bankrupt you? The yeah. reason is very simple. The reason is we're basically a Christian country. What happens in a Christian country is not that everyone is Christian in religion. They can be atheists. But what the statement of Christianity is about is the statement of certain values that hold true to the very roots of what our, our country was based on, which is the family is a central value of the organization, the community. The community is a central element of the uh, state and, and the county, and the states are a central element of the republic. So when you have these values, you, you learn what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. Certain things break the norm. When you have gay marriage or you have different types of relationships, that may be within the Christian shield. That's up to the theologians to decide that. But the basic point that there may be a, a war of values of class structures, that's inherent to the republic. We have always had internal wars between one ideology and another ideology. I have always had faith that the American public will reaffirm its basic beliefs and that we're a Judeo-Christian country which arises on values of both religion, and that doesn't mean that you can't be an atheist. You can be as long as you understand the precepts and the conduct of behavior that those religions mandate. In other words, treat others as you would treat yourself. The golden rule. Well, that's, that's what I'm getting at is it's very Soviet-style, but also fascist, the way they persecute people and want to arrest preachers that you know read out of the Bible in Houston. They want to subpoena them and want to make you talk away and adopt their language. That's not liberal. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. These people are just sickening autocratic control freaks engaged in what I'd call bullying attempts at cultural overrides. Well, the point here is where, where there is always strife, there's always opportunity for America. And this is where we have the opportunity to fight back, be it on the right or the left. If somebody tries to suppress a minister who wants to read from the Bible or whatever time, then he has the right to assert his right and to fight for that right. Within the doctrines of the American Constitution and our Declaration of Independence, those are the mandates that are given to us. That's why the federal government is becoming weaker and weaker. And what's happening is now judges and judicial courts are beginning to make mandates that have no relevance to everyday living. 
whether Robert says that the country, that a, a company is a person, is absolutely ridiculous and probably will be changed. But in turn, that has affected the way we have voted, and that's affected the way the candidates have come forth. But my faith in the American public is that it really will revolve around things that are anti-fascist, anti-suppression, anti-repression, simply because that's the way we grew up. The problem for the most of the world is that they cannot mirror the notion of the individuality of the American people. Be it you're black, white, green, yellow, or red. That's why people want to come to this country. It will always remain that way. We will always struggle within. Sure. Why would our elites and the Republicans working with them try to fundamentally dumb people down and screw the country up? That is such a premeditated vandalism of the culture. It, it just it repudiates the people running things and shows that they're the lowest form of scum. Well, if you have nothing else to do, you run for Congress and a senator. Most people that I've treated who are a professional politicians really have never started their own business. I've never had day-to-day -day concerns like you and I, where we have to meet a payroll, we have to meet uh, financial obligations. Most of them are very entitled, very lazy, and very scared to go out into the real world to find work and to put themselves up against the reality of uncertainty. And that's really what we've had in leaders, whether it's Clinton, Bush Jr., or Obama. Not one of them has had a job other than being a professional politician, which by definition means you've never had a job. So what we have to look for now is somebody who's really been in the, in the executive branch or the management branch of any company or state. And yeah, why is it always lawyers? Why don't we have like uh, you know corporate people or business people or or medical doctors or something like? Instead, it's always lawyers who just believe they can argue the, any side of anything, and so there's nothing there. There's no core value, and so they're threatened by anybody who has values of any type. They just want us to be these these programmable bots. Well, the lawyers are basically play, are creating their own game. You play within the law, you play within a kabuki that's corrupt and distorted. If you play in medicine, it's an open-ended game that has its own rules. But now you got Rand Paul. You have a lot of doctors now in Congress. You're going to have CPAs at the local level here, at the commissioner level. And we need more managers who literally had jobs. And now we have the head of the VA who's come out of Procter & Gamble. We're going to have businessmen running forth. I mean, uh, you know, Romney was an example of a businessman. John Huntsman was an example of a businessman. America turned them down for a man who had no history and no practical application. So the question becomes, are we going to repeat this again? Are we going to vote in somebody who's singular because of their color or their gender? Or are we going to bring in somebody who understands finances, management, and implementation? That's the decision America has. Now, because you've come on over the years uh, for 14 years or 13 yeah. years and never plugged anything. I, I mean, I do find your company interesting. Tell us tell us the name of it. We'll put the website up on screen. Tell us well, about your, your nutrition. When I was in Montana seven, eight years ago, I developed a company with a brilliant uh, 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 natural path named John Neustadt. And we developed two key products. One was MK4 or OsteoK, which was used for osteoporosis. We didn't initiate that product. We took it in from Japan, where it's been used for 30 years for the, for the treatment of osteoporosis and the prevention of fractures. We don't worry about the uh, bone density as much as we worry about decreasing fractures, and we found that we can decrease fractures significantly. At the same time, we've gotten initial approval by the FDA for the treatment of acute myelocytic leukemia and myodysplastic uh, syndrome, wow. which are very important issues. And people all over the world have now been buying this up in the hundreds and thousands. And, and as I said to Alex, you know, I really don't know, watch the company because it works by itself. It's word of mouth. And the other product is Mitophore, which is an amazing a mitochondrial infection and it improves the memory. And the last product we have is the multiple vitamins, which is the requirement of four vitamins minimum per day, which was uh, formulated by Dr. John Newstead, and when you deal with NBI Health, you will be dealing with my partner, John Newstead, who's a brilliant, brilliant uh, pharmacist and a brilliant botanist, and this company has been very successful because of word of mouth and because the products do work, and we don't claim that we discovered the initial product. We claim that we formulated and made it pure and potent, which means it's very rare in America to have products which are literally not 
diluted with other uh, brands and other lower quality products, we guarantee the highest quality made in the United States and there's performance again. Well, so, I'm very interested I in it because I look at the formulations. They're amazing, and I, I know how yeah. successful it is in just eight years. Um, and, I, I mean, we follow at InfoWarsLife.com the very same ideas, the very same principles, and it is all about word of mouth, and that's why being moral is a win-win-win for the customers, for yourself, for everybody. I mean, that's the only karma or mojo, reap what you sow that I want, uh, is, uh, you know, serious high quality. And there's... Uh, all these attempts to suppress these type of things, uh, but I see that being defeated as well. So the moral of the story is there's not just evil in this world. There's good as well. Now, listen, I want to get to calls. I don't want to hog everybody here. Renee, David, Wayne, Douglas, Daniel, uh, who's been holding the longest here, John? Rena in Canada. Okay, Rena in Canada. The guy in Thailand had to hang up. Uh, okay, Rena in Canada. Go ahead. You're on the air with Dr. Pachenik. Okay, you can hear me? Yes, I can, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so um, I just, I kind of have a small uh, testimonial about vaccines, and then I'm just wondering uh, how they can get away with this stuff. Um, two years ago, when my son was two and a half, he was given a vaccine, and then the next day when he got out of the bath, his legs started wobbling, and he just, like, fell over. And I, 20 minutes later, he was really hot. I ended up having to call 911. While I was waiting, his lips turned blue. It was like the scariest day of my life. We got to the hospital. They did all kinds of tests. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. And then I started researching vaccines, and I found out it says right in the inserts that they cause seizures. And I'm just wondering how they could be constantly injured. Well, all almost everyone I know that's ill got a vaccine, adult or child, and they get Guillain-Barre, narcolepsy. They can't drive cars anymore. Uh, they get epilepsy from it. Uh, they get cancer from it. Uh, people's kids are fine. They're brain damaged. The blood coming out their nose the next day. Uh, I mean, it, it is a curse. And again, I'm not saying vaccines aren't a real technology. It's just that whatever's going into them, whatever's happening, I wouldn't take a vaccine uh, if my life depended on it. Now, I don't know Dr. Pachinik's view on this. Dr. Pachinik, your view on immunization. Well, on a collective level, we need to immunize our children. Otherwise, we're going to have an outbreak of what I've seen when I grew up, which is polio, measles. Um, it is not a very good uh, epidemic to have. On the other hand, you do have concerns and side effects, so you really have to study and find out how much thermosol and how much mercury there is in the vaccine and whether there's a variation of it. Well, that's the thing, though. They lie and say, so you're honest, like doctors always were, and said, yeah, there's a cost-benefit. Now they just say, hey, there's no side effects, trust us, take it. And when you get hurt, they try to deny it. Uh oh, here's an example. They never said give pregnant women vaccines until six years ago. Now they say give them extra. Now, I've talked to medical doctors on air. They say that's crazy. What do you say? Well, I haven't given it. You know, I've just given vaccines to myself and my family. Unfortunately, nothing has happened, but I can't get into the details of vaccines. I've not been uh, privy to all the studies, but I do know from an epi epidemiological point of view that we do have to contain certain problems. One is flu, which Spanish flu has killed over 20 million people in 1990. We have some control over that now. Yeah, I think the issue is the vaccine companies have been given protections where they can't get sued, basically. Remember porting down and Bioport and the troops getting hurt with bad vaccines? I think the issue is they're allowed to put out crap, Doc. Well, that's the problem of the FDA. The FDA has to monitor this more effectively. Can we monitor more effectively? Yes. Will I speak on behalf of the FDA? No. I think Margaret Hamburger has to end, uh, you know, address these issues as to where the vaccines have to be improved. All right, well, that lady so already hung up, but I wanted to hear from her if her son got better. We're so sorry, ma'am. Look, it's, it, it's cause and effect. Take the shot, have the convulsion, and it's an autoimmune response in the brain, according to medical doctors. And, and I get the fact, I wish vaccines were safe and effective. I would take them. It's just that the damage, I believe, is starting to outweigh what they claim the good is, Doc. Uh, let's talk to Daniel in Colorado. You're on the air with Dr. Pachenik. Hello, Alex. Um, thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm calling from Durango, Colorado, and here in the local paper, the Durango Herald, they put out a, an article stating drones take to the sky. And how they're selling this is how it will be beneficial for wildfires 
how they can locate, locate the hot spots and go in and put them out. Um, you know, we see the police state forming. We see martial law on the horizon. How do you, what are your thoughts on drones? Well, that's they, a good point. Whenever we showed about five years ago or four years ago that they're planning to use drones to surveil farmers and harass people, they had the media say it wasn't true. Now they're launching them. Dr. Pachinik, what is your concern on drones, the police state, you name it? Because there is an awakening happening, but the system tends to you know, try to set up an oppression system. Well, what's happening is the more the police state tries to set up an oppressive system, the more faulty it becomes. In other words, the bigger it becomes in some ways, the American public should be grateful. It really doesn't function as size increases. It becomes more ineffectual. I'll give you an example. In the day 20, 30 years ago, they may have collected the National Security Agency one million bits of information in a minute. So they might have been able to monitor. Now they're collecting billions of bits of information which has no relevancy to anything. With the issue of drones, it's a fascinating phenomenon because now you can buy a drone for $300 and people can actually have their own drones taking pictures. So I think it's a new era. I think it's equally... Uh, I tell you what, stay there, the stay system. there. I want to come back and, and have you finish up, Dr. Pachanik. I had a drone fly into my property, up to my house, through the window, and it got away before I could get it. But that did happen. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions. Silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at Silverlungs.com. That's Silverlungs.com. I am a 47-year-old female and had a heart attack in 2005. This is Alice from New Jersey. I still get angina, even with four stents. I was taking nitro two or three times a week. The very first day after taking heart and body extract, the chest pain was gone. Now I don't wear a nitro patch. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. On September 30th, 2014, the first confirmed case of Ebola appeared in the U.S. This combined with several other unidentified viruses have some of our customers at 30dayfoodsupply.com concerned about the safety of our domestic food supply, resulting in a surge of our $99.90 serving kits. While we at 30dayfoodsupply.com have no expertise in epidemiology, we are aggressively purchasing raw materials that are currently in stock and we intend to continue to sell our 30-day non-GMO emergency food supply for only $99 as long as we can. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then pass the savings on to you. Call 541-229-0010 and purchase our 30-day, 90-day serving emergency food supplies for only $99 and $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit our website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. 541-229-0010. Federal agents, we are armed! What would you do with me? Do all the things we know. Would you stand up for truth? Or would you turn away to? And then what if you saw all of the things that's wrong? Would 
Well, we've been getting Dr. Steve Pachenik's perspective today. we got six minutes left, and we'll take a few more calls for him. StevePachenik.com is his site. Doc, anything else you want to add before we talk to Wayne and David? Uh, no, I'm very pleased to answer the question, and I'm honored to be on your show. I'd love to listen. Honored to have you. Wayne in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Alex, I want to share something real quick, and then i got a question. Uh, I've seen some things out here 70 miles from your location. Uh, I've seen two spacecraft out here, man, but I just three days ago, I saw what looked like a B-52 silver fuselage flying over me, and what fell out of the sky was like a giant sperm. I mean, it was odd, but it had a tail like a web, uh, like a spider web almost that I'm seeing things out here that are unbelievable. So I believe they have technology beyond our understanding. Uh, my question for Dr. I'll tell you, you saw uh, what dropping giant sperm out of the sky? Well, these things had like an egg sack on one end and a tail that came off of it. it I mean, it looked like a huge sperm, but uh, it, it was odd. I wish I'd got pictures. I Sounds like some kind of mid-air refueling deal. Uh, very, very strange. Uh, what was your question for Dr. Pachinik? Well, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the psychology that we can't get beyond between the believers and the and the non-believers of what's going on here. And does this relate to Revelation in that some men's minds are seared? The great delusion. You know, yeah, yeah, given the great delusion. Let me ask Pachinik that then in, in the time. Thank you, uh, caller. It's some video of that. I'd like to see it. Um, Dr. Pachinik. How do you get people who have cognitive dissonance and are in denial to wake up and admit this stuff's going on? Well, the problem, well, it, it takes an incident and it takes a shock for them to suddenly realize that there's one thing they believe and then the phenomenon is not according to their belief. Like 9-11, everybody felt, oh, it's not possible because it takes too many people to be in a conspiracy and we don't do that and the American government doesn't do that. And finally... Alex Jones come forth or Dr. Pachenik, and then what happened is engineers and architects from all over the United States, hundreds of them said, look, the, uh, the fact that a building 40 stories high comes down in 10 seconds is not possible, and this is what happened. And then eventually that cognitive dissonance of non-belief with the phenomenon of how you destroy a, a building and the fact that a third building was blown up without any effect, that breaks the cognitive dissonance. That's eventually, right. Eventually people begin to say, oh, my God, you know, our country does go against us, and therefore we must protect us. And that's why you and I are here to basically attempt to break that denial, but it takes time. David, Louisiana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, this is David with the NOLA Report. I got to interview John McCain about Benghazi. And I got Good to job. Speak to an yeah, I got to uh, speak to an establishment establishment uh, Republican uh, over the uh, one night at a congressional victory party. And I was picking his brains about a lot of topics, and he said, one of them was Russia, and he said that we should go in and kill every single one of the rebels in the uh, Donetsk region. The first question to Mr. Pachenik is, do you think we should cut off the uh, Russian pipeline in that region? And the second one is, uh, we always associate communism with Democrats, but do you believe that there are fascists in the uh, establishment Republican Party, or are they just crony capitalists? Well, I think there are two good questions. Number one, we don't have to do anything physically to Putin. We're doing it already uh, psychologically and economically. When you drop the price of oil below $90 uh, per barrel, that's the, that's the first uh, red line for him. And the second red line is that the uh, Kremlin, we know, is preparing for uh, an economy and not an effective economy. I'll tell you what, do five more minutes, Doc. I want you to be able to finish this thought. We'll talk to okay, Douglas in a few... The is no, we don't need to go in. They were basically dropping the whole economy of Russia by just you lowering the price of oil. Yeah. But is that moral? What did they do to us? I'm going to come back and ask you that straight ahead. 70 seconds. We're back, folks. Infowars.com. When you're out on the road... The last place you want to be is on the road. But if the unfortunate happens, you'll be glad you were wearing diamond gussets. There's a place down in Tennessee Where they make blue diamond gusset jeans They so pride in every stitch Guarantee you love the way they fit 
Put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it, others don't. We turn jeans inside out. Diamond gusset jeans. Made in the USA with unparalleled quality. Our Defender motorcycle jeans combine gusset comfort with Kevlar protection so you can ride all day with confidence. Order yours at gusset.com. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. Chenick, I didn't know that, but we're getting these emails. I mean, um, that I guess in his area of the country it happened too. Two years ago, I said CNN is dead. Almost two years ago, last January. It'll be two years this January. Uh, and that just shows how they're collapsing. Dish Network just dropped them. Uh, Doc, what does that signify? So you're saying you have Time Warner Cable and CNN's not on it? No, no. Actually, you were very uh, prophetic because when you said it last week, I was about to add, well, our uh, Windstream uh, company, which is basically providing us with CNN and other cable, literally dropped CNN, and without any excuse, without any apologies. What it says is it doesn't have an audience. It never will have the kind of audience that you have. It doesn't, ma it doesn't manage to go into the millions. It really is just a problem. It's a repetition, and people are not watching TV. And by the way, you know what we're cable. getting? I haven't launched it yet because I've been so busy with the satellites and a few other things, but it's going to happen soon in the next few months. We have cable systems and broadcast TV beating down our doors, wanting to carry the nightly news in this show. So it, it just shows it's word of mouth. It's exactly word of mouth, and that's the point, Alex. You didn't even realize how prophetic you were and how enduring you were, but CNN is not prophetic and enduring. I mean, Anderson Cooper did his internships at the, at the CIA. He came out of Yale. I mean, the, the man can't even speak the truth, and it, it's not effective. People are bored by it. They're bored by Fox as well, I have to tell you. I know Roger Ailes. I respect him very much, but it's nothing more than show business. In turn, you have literally gone forth. You took the risk. People want to learn. They want to hear different points of view, and they're really not interested in what cable has to say or TV has to say. And you saw it. The market worked that Turner Broadcasting just dropped them. So did Windstream. And now you see that there is no more CNN and they won't come back on. And eventually the, nobody will care. And that's really what the reality was. But you were more prophetic than you realized. Well, forget about me. I mean, it was obvious when I was there two years ago, they were rotting and I said they're collapsing. And I've been saying the last few months, look at their ratings. I mean, 15 minutes of this radio show rated with Arbitron has the ratings of one of their shows. And I've, I'm a small operation. How can I have more viewers and listeners than CNN? And how can they still be on TV? It's like this facade that was just still standing there. Same thing with MSNBC. How fast could the facade start collapsing, Dr. Pachanik? Well, it's collapsing now. Nobody's really watching MSNBC. Jeff Zucker is not effective. He wasn't effective at NBC, the man who ran that. And he's not effective at MSNBC. Nobody wants to hear the repetition of the same storyline same narrative, and they don't want to pay that kind of money for it. You, in turn, provide more punch for the dollar. I'm not here to advertise you, but you, you, the, the, the point of fact is you've endured for well over 12 to 13 years where CNN cannot endure. Well, and, I mean, that's, that's just since four, 13 years we've been talking. I've been on there 20, but I was a lot smaller. 20 years, right. Yeah, but you grew. They yeah. did not grow. They went from a lot of money to very ineffectual deleveraging position. Remember when Time Warner AOL deleveraging? Remember when right. Time Warner AOL was the biggest company in the world? Yeah, but it was an, it, an unholy alliance. You had Time Warner, which I was part of as a book writer, and they had money. And AOL was a paper company. We had nothing more than the paper. And basically, AOL now is really not very effective. It doesn't grow, and most of the institutions are too large. They can't provide. Which they can't, they can't adapt. The so the, so, well, listen, I agree with you. The, the establishment is a joke. If people would just stand up to it, and you're an example of that, I'm an example. Our listeners are. I'm sorry to all the callers. I'm out of time. Dr. Pachenik, thank you so much for the time today. Interesting perspective uh, on the Always whole world. An honor. Always a pleasure. All well, right, thank you so much. Thank your audience. All right, stevepachinik.com is his uh, website, infowars.com and prisonplanet.com are our websites. And I'm not trying to be the biggest thing around. In fact, it's daunting and a little bit creepy uh, to have this much responsibility, but the dinosaurs are dropping. They're already dead. They're just you know, putting perfume on them so you don't smell the stink. Great job with the crew. Back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. With autumn in the air.
It's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at Herbaly. What I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only...